Hello and welcome to REAL News. Here today, the exclusive interview of Marcus Zuzek, author of the moderately good book, The Book Thief. Bringing you this exclusive interview all the way from West Newburgh, Massachusetts, is Aaron and here of you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Being a native of Australia, we were not able to get Marcus here today for his interview in person, but we will use the power of the internet to get you the interview you deserve. Now, Marcus, do you have anything you'd like to say about your wonderful book, The Book Thief, which I mostly read? The Book Thief is a serious novel about an orphan named Liesel whose mother left her after her brother died growing up in Nazi Germany, as well as the events that took place there. Sounds riveting. Now, I know that you're a proud user of literary devices. Would you like to tell us about any devices that you used in the story that you're especially proud of? No, literary devices are the devil's work. Well, come on, there has to be at least one. Well, I guess you could say I'm a fan of point of view. Alright, now how do you use point of view in your story? You see, point of view is how a story is told, either first person from a character in the story's direct vision and such and thoughts from which you only know their side of the story, but in third person it's told by a narrator, not in the story who knows everything. I thought to make my novel epic, I should combine the two. And how did you do that? The story is told from the point of view of Death himself. Oh, <laughs> alright, I've read a couple books like that. So, the dynamic character is one that changes. Do you have any dynamic characters in your story? In fact, one could say that the main character, Liesel, changes quite a bit. How so? At the beginning of the story, Liesel is young, innocent, and weak when she is dropped off at an orphanage by her mother. But as the story grows on, she becomes more mature growing up in poverty, learns a little bit at school, and joins a gang in which she steals apples and books. Which is how the story got its name. How interesting. Were there any cyclical or repeating events in your story? There is indeed. You see, as Lazel starts to read, she wants to read more. And as she wants to read more, she realizes that she can't afford books. So naturally, she starts to steal them. And she can't stop stealing them. The stealing of the books becomes a very cyclical event in the story. Yeah, I guess that really can't be avoided. It happens all the time, right? Uh, were there any symbols in your story, such as items or places that symbolize more than they really were? Hmm. I guess you could say that the books themselves are a symbol in the story. You see, in that time, the Nazis take everybody's books and burn them. But Liza likes books, so she steals the books. And at first she's just stealing them. But after a while, she feels like she's saying something against the Nazis, that, that she's standing up for her rights. And it's a symbol of her longing deep down to rebel against the man. Yeah, well, that's all the time we have left for this interview. See you all next week on REAL News, in our story next week, about a boy in West Newbury who tried to get a petition going, saying that lobsters are gross and look like bugs, then send it to Mitt Romney. Well, have a nice day. Disclaimer, I'm not Marcus Jusic, I did not the book thief, I'm sure Marcus is a great guy, I'm probably not a controlled rights activist, and interview does not exist, and real news is fictitious. Have a nice day.